Kia ora, g'day, welcome to Maximise the Election, uh, the podcast with a difference. Uh, Maxim Institute uh, here with uh, Natasha Bolas. Hello. Our re- Hello, Natasha, our researcher and uh, director of research, Marcus Roberts. Um, we're going to break it down to three segments of five. The first segment is a plane and a fancy, just like your mum used to say when they'd hand out the samplers. Uh, one plane is the, the issue of the week that's pushing... Uh, pushing other people's buttons perhaps. Fancy is something unexpected uh, and uh, let's hope somewhat delicious. Uh, That is also telling. So let's rip into it. Look, I think for the plane, straight away, uh, Labour's rotten week. Um, Kitty Allen, David Parker quitting as Revenue Minister, leaks all over the show. How bad is this, Natasha? Look, I think National's probably not going to have to try very hard for the election <laughs> this year. I think Labour's doing a pretty good job of sinking its own ship uh, under a, you know, a lot of unfortunate circumstances, but still it's not looking good for them. Question though, do governments lose elections or do oppositions gain government? I think the government always has a much harder battle, uh, particularly when generally the impression is that things aren't going well for the public anyway. Change is as good as a holiday. What do you think, Marcus? So I think everyone's talking about Labour's incompetence, um, but I think that this week actually proves the opposite. Because if you're going to have a justice minister get in trouble with the police, you're going to have a revenue minister disagreeing with their revenue plans, mm. you're going to have caucus confidentiality being, being shattered, leaked, you do it all at once. You layer it all at once. They have timed this perfectly to have a week where... You just get sick Wait, of so this. you're telling me you're telling me they had a whiteboard meeting. Yes. And they said, Okay, Kitty, we need you to come in here. Um, then David, we need you about midweek. And by the way, who's gonna be the leaker? So I'm just saying that if they What had, you're saying is that this if is they a had fortunate it, confluence, perhaps. Would this be worse if they'd had one per week for three mm. weeks? Much yeah, worse. Absolutely. Mm. You're mm. talking about one rotten week mm. and now Chris Hipkins will be hoping like anything that he can get in there and say, only way is up, guys. Don't do anything. But if you'd had three weeks of this, we'd had yeah. a week of Kitty Allen, yeah. a week of David Parker, a week of Leaker slash GST plan being leaked, that's much worse. That's interesting. I, I agree with you that it's all happened uh, at once, assuming that there's not another week like this uh, lined up because you're assuming some kind of uh, self-control here. Um, that doesn't appear to be evident. I've um, tried to help Labour yeah, out here. This, yeah, is, this yeah, is the positive spin. Yeah. But yeah, the problem is, is that this might be setting the tone for... We might have 11 more weeks of campaign where we have three different huge issues every week for the government. To juggle for the media to decide which one they're actually going to pay attention to. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I want to flick to the fancy because um, that's the um, poll of small to medium enterprises that's uh, typically done around this time by MYOB. What was interesting to me was 64% of those small business owners want a change in government. And it's said that this is reflective of uh, a wider cohort. Are you sensing that this is an accurate barometer or is this, because small to medium enterprise, obviously that would say they'd be more nationally inclined anyway. Um, I should think traditionally that had been the case, mm. uh, but at the last election, perhaps it reflects the way New Zealanders were thinking about the future on the whole. It was that idea that actually we won't have to vote with our pockets this time. We can mm. think a little bit more about the bigger issues Whereas I think for this election, people are much more concerned about the risks of a government that won't be able to to handle finances. You've raised a good point. Do you think people are going to vote globally, i.e. big issues? It's like, I've got no dough at the supermarket. I'm just going to... Yeah, there's there's no time to think about any of the bigger global issues at the moment for people if they can't afford their groceries. That's just... Is that why no one cares about health at the moment? No one's talking about health. This is, this is the dichotomy that we got into under COVID, health versus economy. Mm. There is only one big issue, and that's the economy. Mm. You can't have any of the other bigger issues being dealt with, like health, oh, the, Are you applying COVID rules? Yeah, you can't have anything like that uh, if you don't have the money to pay for it. And so, Which is what we're seeing at the moment in health. You know, yes. the, the health department, there is a lot going wrong in health at the moment. It's awful, but we don't have the kind of cash to fix a problem like that. So, or, the, yeah. or the attention span, or the capacity, yeah. the bandwidth, because according to Marcus, we're um, planning our worst week possible so that we can get it out of the way to actually deal with it. 
and I think the point is though that small and medium enterprises, this is not them all being um, selfish and, and wanting to um, get the best amount of money for each of them. Mm. This is them actually thinking about all those big issues because they have all realized that you can't deal with any of those big issues unless you've got the money to pay for it. You can only put it on the credit card for so long. Yeah. Okay, let's let's boil it down. Winners uh, and losers. Um, I think it's pretty clear this week that Labour have been been the behind the game. Yeah. Okay, quest, question <laughs> then. The winner, though? But but who who's who's the winner? And if they if they are, see, I was reflecting on um, Kitty Allen's trial, for example. And what's been what's been interesting for me is that this has been quite a, I suppose, textured conversation about mental health and. Um, and, and, and that's been uh, encouraging in a sense. But you start to get trial details coming out uh, a bit later, and then you can turn this round. So what I mean is I'm a suffering person. I was trying to um, do well for... So what I'm saying is that Labour could be able to spin this, to say, hey, we're trying hard. We're human. We're not like those other guys, but at least we're trying hard. I don't think Labour will turn it around, though. I think to, uh, the Maori Party... They might, you know, because I think one of the things they're talking about is it, it was it harder for Kerry Allen to be in Parliament than for other people because of her Maori heritage? You know, mm. is is Parliament welcoming to Maori people? I think the Maori Party are concerned about that. So I think the smaller parties are the winners this week in in most avenues. Yeah, I think that the the, the winners will be on the left, the Greens into Party Maori, um, and because I'm, there will be a, a flight from Labor. I, I think so. I think there'll be people who vote Labour who would never dream of voting for National or, or, or even for Act mm. who will look be saying, well, these guys are just incompetent, um, despite what I said earlier. Yeah. So let's look for something else. Let's tack further left. I'm really interested in who's the winner on the right. Is it is it David Seymour? Is it Chris Luxon in the National Party? Or is it... Winston Peters. Back from the beyond. I was going to say the dead, but that was not... <laughs> No, Winston Peters is going to live to be 150 years old. There's Absolutely no question about like that. that. Um, okay, so and well, call it then. Has it? Do you think it is a bit? This this will benefit Winston Peters. Not sure. <laughs> Never rule him out. Never yeah. rule Winston out. Yeah. Um, I think that grumpy electorates, mm -hmm. which this week will have fed into, help Winston Peters. I think you're you're both assuming something, which is like the grumpiness actually. Le grumpiness actually creates a response whereas perhaps it might create indifference so I'm thinking turnout so the losers I wonder here might be the um, cohorts that are naturally going to be assisted shall we say um, let's say in the labour scheme of things by labour policy or those who would naturally vote for labour where they see this and they go you know what I'm not gonna I, I can't be bothered this time I'm not going to turn out we saw this with Efeso Collins when he was running for mayor uh, actually quite a there was a dynamic campaign run by uh, Wayne Brown fix Auckland etc that was fine but the issue was that labour's natural support base didn't turn out I would say um, the winner may be indifference mm. and, and, and I'm saddened by that because more people need to be able to participate to make this whole thing worthwhile. Well, I think that was the other thing in the SME report, I can't remember what the percentage was, it was somewhere between 6 and 10% I think felt that it wouldn't make any difference to them whatsoever who was mm, who was in mm, government. That's, yeah. that's indifference. That's actually, and that's the, that's the cohort that swings elections, if you think about it. And presumably they're the cohort who, you know, uh, for their own interests are quite switched on about these sort of things. So, you know, if they're saying it's not going to make a difference, that's a problem. I don't have a problem with people staying home if they make a decision to stay home. That's fine, on election yeah. day. Yeah. Um, if they're saying... It, I'm staying home because it won't make any difference. That's mm. more of a problem. Mm. Well, I wonder. I wonder too, though, if it's like oh, I just I'm I don't have any trust in in the, these institutions, in this process, in these people. Yeah. I feel beaten down by the economy. Uh, I'm I'm sick, but I just spent four hours at the ED, and then mm. I had to go home because uh, they said I wasn't sick enough, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just a, a general wearing down of uh, of people, which will then play out in disengagement from the electoral process. Sorry to suck the fun out of this, guys, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. no. If we have major indifference, I think then that's um, good for the opposition. Mm. That's where it's going to go. Okay, let's uh, let's move. The next, uh, the next segment is uh, what we're looking for in the coming week. Natasha. Uh, in the coming week, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about health. Mm. Uh, I think 
particularly cancer wait times. I think that's a really serious issue that's not getting any any audio time at the moment. Particularly in the South Island, yeah, where there's um, there is a postcode lottery uh, that, and, and this is not this is not a new discussion. This is a discussion we've been having periodically for a long time, Marcus. Yeah, I think that policy-wise, it's a fantastic thing to, to keep an eye on. I think just more generally, can the government turn it around to look a bit more competent and like a, a party that can actually govern? Mm. I'm I'm interested in seeing if national, given that given that, uh, and again, I'm just I'm, I'm speaking purely to looking at this as a, as a competition of ideas. Let's hope can national bring in some ideas. Labor's had a terrible week last week. There's a vacuum. Can national fill it with um, with substance, s- substance, and something galvanising? I'm not utterly convinced that governments lose elections. I'm I'm I. I think that oppositions need to win elections, so we need to. I, I would be interested to see how that um, that vacuum will be filled. I'm, um, and it's interesting. I was having a conversation uh, with someone uh, just this morning, saying, "Oh, they're talking. Nationals talking about a, a four lane, four lane highway, six billion. Like, can't they spend that on health?" So, so what I'm, and 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 this would be someone who 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 might naturally be inclined to national. So there's that sense of is are national connected to what's going on? Okay, so Labour's creating the news. I suppose that's a kind of connection to the news. Is national able to take advantage of that and um, and and actually create some news that um, shows that they're on top of it? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. too. <laughs> All right, let's um. Look, let's have let's have some good times. Generally, good egg this week. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw uh, David Parker into the mix. He quit as revenue minister because of a principle. Now, I disagree with him about wealth tax. I think that's a that's a discussion that we need to keep having. But I like that a politician isn't evacuating because of some personal issue, a principle issue, but also that they're not being pushed out because something terrible happened in their spare time. I mean, it is handy that he had another portfolio, so <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't have to Nothing like principle that doesn't cost anything, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I agree, Tim, that it is good. <laughs> there is um, there is silence. Some, there is silence no, no, was so... Half a, I, think, no, I think that there is um, principle there, and also in comparison to perhaps um, Grant Robertson, who also seems to have a real problem with the tax direction of this government, mm, mm. Uh, but has not yet uh, stood on the principle yet. So you know, yes. I thought I was reflecting on that. And I think um, I wonder. I was my my explanation for that was that Grant uh, Grant Robertson Grant, as if I know him first name <laughs> basis. I don't know him. Minister feel, of Finance, I think. I feel is. like the Minister of Finance. Um, I wonder if he's more of a party, a, a creature of the party in a way that perhaps um, the ex-revenue minister isn't. Now, I don't have any facts to back that up because um, David Park has been around for 21 years, so he's he's been in this for a long time. Natasha, what about you in terms of generally good egg? I think I'd, I'd throw it out to the opposition this week. Um, around the Kiri Allen situation, the fact that they didn't make it personal, they didn't attack her, they uh, allowed her to bow out and, uh, I mean... They, they took Chris Hipkins up, and I think they should, on his management of that situation. Mm. But I think they managed to to uh, receive the news with grace when it came to her personally, and I thought mm. that was good. I, I, I sensed that there was uh, a lot of, um, I would say, empathy and affection for Kitty Allen uh, within Parliament, you could sense that in some of the um, some of the ways that uh, you know David Seymour saying, "I really liked her. Uh, we got on. We got on really well. She she had a down to earth quality, and mm. that's actually to um, just to uh, underscore that again. This is someone who started working in KFC. We need more people who started working in KFC to be in Parliament. So it's actually uh, her mm-hmm. departure is a loss. Now, it's necessary given what she did and what happened, but it's still a loss. But, yeah, so 100%. what do you think? Are we going to vote for the opposition because they um, is generally good eggs? Opposition versus David Parker. Put you on the spot, uh, uh, Who do I? No, no, I was going to say the last one was I'm going to give it to the tiebreaker, which is the media. Because you imagine somewhere else they would be door stopping someone like Kitty Allen, yeah, that's think, true. and they yeah. haven't. They haven't. So I think that the reporting on it's actually been balanced and and fair. 
There you go. All right, three choices. Uh, you're the listener. You can vote. We'll be back again next week with Maximise the Election. Natasha Marcus, thank you very much. Thanks, Tim.